All right, I'm going to go over how to set up your arm controls so that you can switch between FK mode and IK mode. Again, this is not the ability to snap and match the positions of the IK and the FK, purely just to be able to swap back and forth between IK controls and FK controls um, when you see fit. So, first things first, I kind of stripped down my finished version of the rig to an earlier setup where I hadn't completed the arm. Um, so what I have here is, I'm going to actually hide the geometry for temporarily. Um, I haven't constrained anything, or um, I haven't even added the IK handle in. This is just for the left hand view right here. Um, so I'm going to just quickly go through setting up some of this stuff. Um, Obviously, for the FK controls, I'm just going to go through and one by one do an orient constraint. You can technically try doing a parent constraint for these, um, but some people are, have had issues with that. And also, you don't really need a parent constraint because where you're only going to be um, rotating these joints ever, we're not going to actually be moving them, so a, a, a parent constraint isn't entirely necessary. Um, and now just by doing that orient constraint, I should have the ability to move all of my FK controls. Um, for the fingers, if we look at how those are set up, so we want the fingers to come along with both the IK and the FK arm. So those are not going to be attached to just the FK controller. Um, the circular one is the FK. The diamond one is the IK, which is currently not being used yet. Um, so if we look at how these are set up, and you can hit F in your outliner, by the way, to focus on. So I have a whole group um, with all the hand controls in it, and then they have their own subgroups within that. Um, so what we can do with this is, if we turn off the geometry again, um, we can actually grab this palm joint, which isn't doing too, too much, really, and parent that to, or sorry, parent the hand group to that. And this time we are gonna do an actual parent constraint. And then that means whenever um, the wrist rotates, regardless of what mode you're in, the fingers are gonna be attached to this palm joint instead. So they will always come along regardless of whether you're in FK mode or IK mode. And again, that's just this whole group with all of the controls in it. Is parented. And then last but not least, we have this over here, um, which is a switch control for the hand. So this is where we'll put our attributes to switch back and forth between IK and FK, as well as finger driven key controls. So what I'm going to do with this is um, parent this as well. So here's the one on the left hand side. It's just kind of by itself in the hierarchy. It doesn't need an offset group or anything really. Um, I'm just going to grab the palm joint, grab this, and parent constrain that. Um, and then I can also grab all these attributes because I actually don't need any of these. And I can say lock and hide selected because I'm just going to have all custom attributes on this. Um, and now that will also come along with my hand, arm, etc. Uh, and so really the last thing we need to do is to set up our IK handle. So I'll do that real quick, like so. And now since our IK blend is at one, it's gonna be overriding the FK controls and just be moving in IK mode. Gotta undo to set that back because it, it can't be set to zero yet. Um, so I now have my IK handles it up, and of course you want to say name it. I'm going to put it in my uh, IK handle group because this doesn't go in with the rest of the hierarchy. And since I already have a controller here, I can just grab this controller, and I only want to point constrain the IK handle since IK handles only take into consideration or they only move via translation, they don't need to be rotated like FK joints. And then this is the part where 
I want to also grab the same nerves controller and then the wrist joint, not you, the wrist joint, which already has one um, orient constraint on it, and I'm going to place another orient constraint on the same joint to the IK control. So there should be two weights on that. And you can, as long as you have maintain offset, these numbers are kind of stacking up. Um, they wouldn't be this high, but since I kind of reverse engineered my finished rig, they weren't at zero by default. But as long as you have maintain offset on, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So currently, this is going to be fighting, both of these controls will be fighting for dominance on the rotation here. So we'll have to toggle that off. So those are the building blocks of getting um, the IK arm and um, the FK arm set up, and now we have to go through and set up the switch for them. So, um, first of all, I'm going to grab my, my switch controller here. I'm going to make myself, nope, not you. I'm going to make myself a new attribute called R arm IK FK. I like to make them all capital since it's an acronym. Switch. This can be a float. You could technically make it a boolean if you want because um, it's really on or off. Um, but I'll just leave it a float for now. Um, and we only want this to be 0 and 1 because there's only two states, either IK or FK. Um, we don't want to go beyond that. And we can hit uh, OK. And now we have that. Um, so first thing is I'm going to use the connection editor. I'm going to load in my switch control, turn off non-keyable attributes so we can just see that. And the IK handle load in for the right and also turn off non-keyable attributes. And here we want the IK blend because that will either turn the um, IK itself on or off. So as long as we just have this connected with this, whenever our custom attribute is at zero, the IK blend will also be at zero. And when we change this to one, then the IK blend will also be at one. So the connection editor just creates this direct connection um, straight into the IK handle with no math, just straight up copying the number. Uh, which means that if I, at this point already, I can, um, if this is at 1, then my IK handle will be in charge of everything. And if this is at 0, then my um, IK handle, or my FK controllers, will be in charge. And sometimes the viewport um, just glitches, so as you saw there, um, it didn't really update right away, so if that happens, just kind of nudge your controllers a little bit, and chances are it will update because um, sometimes the IK blend thing misbehaves a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do. Sorry, yeah, it gets a little annoying after a while, but um, that's you know pretty much the only option we have. So I'm going to set everything back to zero. So the other thing that we need to do before this is done is we need to also factor in the orient constraints that are um, currently fighting for control over the wrist. So um, for instead of the connection editor, what we'll use here is the driven key setup. So again, this is our driver, and uh, the driven will be the actual um, constraint object that is currently on the wrist joint, because here's our two weights here from the FK and the IK controller. And let's we have to check, so you have to be you know pretty careful while you're doing this. You can't just blindly click around, so you have to think through this. Currently, this is set to zero. We know that when this is at zero, that means the IK blend is at zero. And we know that when the IK blend is at zero, we know that we are in FK mode. So essentially, if we're going to start with this at zero, we need um, the FK controller to be the one that is at one and the IK to be at zero in the orient constraint. 
So with that set up, we just have to make sure you have everything selected appropriately in um, the window over here and then hit key. Both get the driven key uh, indicator on them that they're dark blue now, um, or at least dark compared to the normal blue color we see. Um, and then we can just go back here and change this to one, change these to their opposite of what they currently are. And hit key again. And now when we are in IK mode, the orient constraint for the FK controller will be turned off or it will be at zero. And when we are in I, um, FK mode, then we will see the orient constraint is working. Again, this is misbehaving a little bit. It's um, kind of just a computer thing. It's technically working properly. But now the orient constraints are no longer fighting for control over that. So it's really just those two things instead of the switch, making sure that your um, IK blend is feeding into a custom attribute and then use that same custom attribute to uh, set a driven key on the orient constraints. If you want to be able to toggle on the visibility of the FK and IK controls, that's easy as well. We can say add attribute, um, R, arm, IK, viz. We're just going to make it that. Um, I might make this a Boolean just so we can see what the difference is there. Because it's either going to be on or off. Um, and we can make one the same exact thing, just R, arm, FK, viz, make that a Boolean as well. And you can see it's literally just on or off rather than numbers. And literally, this is incredibly easy. All you need to do here is um, take all of your uh, controllers for the FK. So here I have them. And this is actually... These are parented uh, with a parent constraint to the clavicle control, um, specifically so I could hide them like this. Um, uh, there might have been some other reason too, but either way, um, I can grab this group and I'm going to connect that to the new attribute I just made. Let's see what happens if we try the connection editor. I'm actually not 100% certain. So we'll load in the left and right, make U and connect it to visibility. It seems like it worked, uh, although I technically selected the wrong one. It needs to be FK. And so when this is on, the visibility will be on, and vice versa. And then if I do um, for IK, I can just find where that is contained, which is right here. It's only one controller because it's just going um, directly. It's parented in the world, so it's not even parented to anything. Um, so I can load that in and connect the visibility of that. And now I can turn that on, turn that on, turn them both on if I want. Beautiful. All right, um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do for this video. I'm sure there's other things um, that I could cover, but I don't want to make this incredibly long. Um, hopefully, that's all you'll need to do to set up your IK control. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could technically make the IK, uh, IK FK switch also a Boolean if you wanted. And uh, I'm not 100% sure, but that might prevent some of the weird uh, viewport uh, errors. But even if those are unavoidable, you can uh, just poke them a little bit and make sure that it's, uh, it is actually working properly. All right, that's all for this one. See you later.